Hey guys, I want to talk about, oh, I guess beginner lessons. This is going to be probably way too simple for a lot of people that watch this, but a lot of people that watch this might also have somebody else, you know, in their life, significant other, boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever, that is like, hey, that might be fun, you know. Show me how to do it. Show me how to play pool. And so that's what I want to talk about. I've done a fair amount of that in the past, taking children, uh, otherwise raw beginners, girlfriends that you know barely know which end of the stick to hit the, the white ball with. And at least made it fun for them. Not necessarily turned them into, you know, good players or certainly not top players, things like that, but at least made it fun and then they can progress at what they have hopefully by then discovered is, you know, their pace. If they decide they even like the game. They may decide that it sucks. They may decide I suck. Never know. So I went to my local pool hall today, and they have they have league tonight. So I was watching, uh, just watching some of the people warm up and you know hang out with pool players. I like doing that. I was watching a guy who's probably the best player on their particular team, uh, trying trying to give some instruction to who's probably the newest person on their team, and. Uh, uh, you know, a raw beginner. You know, some of the things that I heard him explain to her, I guess I agreed with, and some of them I thought were a little bit over her head. And so I thought, well, I'll just do a damn video. And I'll just talk about some of my thoughts about this stuff. What the heck? The very first thing that I Try to make sure that my students can do, because everything is everything is based on. It. Well, not the very first thing. Shit. See, I'm already getting the The very first thing is, okay, here's a cue. Are you right-handed? Okay. Then try it like this. Some people, even though they're right-handed, feel a lot better like this. So, you know, the girl I was watching today, the, the beginner. Um, she was she was left-handed, but whatever. The very first thing after this is the cue stick. You screw it together. You put this chalk on this end and all that. Is just hitting the cue ball. Can they hit the cue ball nice and solid? I don't care where it goes. It just it's it's basically we're looking for a center ball hit. Look for a center ball hit, and can this person do that and get a good solid center ball hit? And a lot of beginners will be like this. That's not what I'm asking them to do. I'm asking them to hit the ball, not tap it. I'm asking them to hit it. Can they hit it straight or hit it solidly? Again, I don't care where it goes. I would prefer it doesn't go anywhere except down the table and back up. Because that's what I want to see. I want to see them do this and have the ball go more or less straight up and down the table while they're hitting the cue ball on the vertical axis. That's all I'm asking of them at that point. Most people, most beginners, find that they can, that they can do that. Sometimes, this girl today, she was her, well, her stroke was like, I don't even know if I can demonstrate it. Her stroke was like that. She, she had a very serious swerve in her stroke at the end. So some correction just on that would enable her to hit the, the ball more solidly. After that, once, once they can hit the ball, then you start, okay, can you hit it where you want to hit it? And that's when I would take just a bunch of balls. Actually, take it back. At this point, I'm over here. I'm like this. 
This is a beginner. I forgot for a second. It's a beginner. Can they do this? Can they put these balls in that bucket? And can they do it basically forever? They're hitting the, the cue ball solidly, and the cue ball is going in the direction that they want. Hopefully, not swerving and steering the ball and all that. And sometimes, you know, this can be this can be tough for for a new player. But if they have that first step where they're hitting the cue ball solidly, it helps a lot. It helps an awful lot. Once they can do that every time, that's when I'll go, watch out cat, there's a cat down there. That's when I go for longer shots. Can they hit, I usually would put out like 10 balls. Can they hit? the 10 balls in this corner, all 10 of them. Can they do all 10 of them? And when they can do that reliably, and only when they can do that reliably, do I say, okay, you're, you're ready to move on to the, the next step. And the next step is put an algebra ball out there and hit it. And start them out as simple as possible. If you start out too simple, you can realize it's too simple and, and you need to, to advance it a little bit. But if you start out too advanced, you something you jump ahead too quickly, they're gonna screw up, they're gonna get frustrated, they might not have fun anymore, they might think you're a dick for pushing them too hard, whatever. Um, if if they, you start out with something simple for them and they do it. They get that sense of validation, they get confidence. It, it's fun for them because they're doing something good. Instead of they're screwing up, they're screwing up, they're screwing up. So put an algebra ball in. Make it a nice straight shot. Just make it a straight shot. That's how shooting this cue ball into the corner. Now I'm just gonna hit the other. You can show them the beginner method at this stage. The beginner method as was taught to me by my dad, by a lot of people, probably by their dad, was do like this, find that spot on that 10 that's pointing straight at the pocket, find that spot, come over here and aim the cue ball at that spot. That's the, the beginner method. That's, like I said, probably the lesson that most people learn. Don't put the don't put the object ball far from the pocket at, at this point. That, that's going to be, be later. Teach them to do that. Used to finding where they want to hit the ball. But again, again. Now they're making balls. They're, you know, they were raw beginner just a couple of lessons ago, and now they're making balls. You can set up things like. You can set up things like this for them. I just tell them. Make all three of these balls, not at once. That would be pretty advanced. But you don't get to pick the cue ball up again. So find the spot. Aim at the spot. The age close enough to the pocket that you can aim at the spot with the beginner method. OK, great. Find the spot. Aim at the spot. They're going to probably going to have to get the bridges to get bad leads like that. Okay, great. Come over here. Find the spot. Aim at the spot. Now they're running balls, and now you know they're, they're probably fairly hooked, and they want to, they, they want to progress. Okay. Now you got to cut the ball to where that beginner method doesn't work anymore. Something like this. Aiming at that point on the 12 is probably going to undercut the ball at this point. So maybe teach them about ghost ball.
I don't think you want to jump into center to edge or 90-90 aiming or anything at this point. I don't think you do. Some people probably do that. But if you teach them about ghost ball, that is, let me find my ghost ball. That is a mathematically accurate way to do it. And do I have my ghost ball? Uh, I don't. Shit. Yeah, I do. I do. So I have my ghost ball. You know, you explain. In order for this 12 to go into this pocket, something has to hit the 12 on the, the part opposite. I'm not talking about spin and throwing all that at this point. Plus the ball is four inches from the pocket. But you can do a ghost ball. Say, if you can get the cue ball right there, where that ghost ball is, then the 12 is going to go in the pocket. Get them used to to not finding the spot on the 12, except they're finding that spot on the 12 and then putting a ghost ball that's touching that spot. And try to keep that in their head. Try to keep, where's that ghost ball? And hey, now, now they're making cut shots. And after a while, probably a little bit more advanced, is you can move on to something else. You know, a, a shot this simple, they're probably going to get bored with the ghost ball pretty quickly on a shot this simple. But they can get used to, well, that looks like about a 45, maybe 50 degree cut. So I can't hit it full in the face. I can't aim straight at that spot. So I've got to aim out a little bit. And get them used to it. Set up easy shots. Easy shots that they can make and maybe not scratch. See how better than I thought it was. If there had been a nine ball there, I'd been good. Set up easy, multiple easy goals instead of bigger jumps. Because as soon as they get stuck on one of those jumps, like I said, they start to lose interest. They're not having any fun anymore. Or, they, you know, they, they can hear an asshole. No way any of that stuff. You want them to keep enjoying it and keep playing and all that. I guess that's what you want. For that, I have my ghost balls still on the table. Simple straight in shots, simple cuts. Next step will be longer shots. So they have their confidence up on shooting your ball when it's hanging in a pocket. You start working on their accuracy a little bit better. You can go back to straight in shots now. Hit that, you can, they can go back to beginner method on this uh, straight in shot. A little, a little bit longer shot. And this can be a fairly long stage of can they do this? And you, there's going to be a point where, where they can't do it every time. The point where I can't do it every time, where Efren can't do it every time. It's going to be a point, a distance, that's going to be, you know, 90 percent make instead of 100 percent make, whatever. But basically, simple shots. They don't have to think about aiming and ghost ball or whatever else you might have thrown at them. All they have to do is find that damn spot and hit that spot with the cue ball not like I just did. This is one of my distances that I have a problem with. I've talked about that before. Don't let them shoot this unless they want to. Don't let them shoot this and miss it and go, keep shooting it, keep shooting it, keep shooting it. No, it doesn't hurt anything. Just say, put it up here. This right here is probably a shot that at my level, I should probably never miss a shot. Now, I, a lot of people would say I should never miss the other one. But knowing myself, let's see, myself, I could probably say that about this shot. I should never miss this shot. I probably will. And a beginner absolutely will. You started to work on your fundamentals with just hitting the cue ball. But they're not going to have them down perfect yet. They're just going to have issues. 
if they, they start getting longer shots, maybe they start thinking about, oh, that's so far away, I better hit it hard or something. I, you know, I, don't, I don't know how the, the brain works on a lot of those people sometimes, but after the longest, whatever, straight, straight in shots, then you can start working on cut shots again. This, this shot right here, I could probably just still use beginner method on this shot at this picture angle. Maybe give them that. Find that eight. Find that spot on that eight. Keep it, keep looking at it. Keep looking at it. Keep looking at that spot. Go over here, get behind the shot line. Aim straight at that spot. Ball was close enough to the pocket that it was still going to go in. It's a, still a thick enough cut that the ball was going to go in. You don't want to. You don't want to present them with cut this eight in to the left until they're ready for it. That's my opinion. There are going to be people that are going to say, no, show them, show them that this ball will go. Make them shoot it a, a hundred times and eventually they'll make it. And then they'll, in theory, know that every other shot that's easier than this will go. Because one, one of the things that was kind of told to me back in the day and I kind of think, I kind of wish that it hadn't been when I was first starting out I'm talking about. And that's all I'm talking about is videos. People that are just starting out. I'm not talking about a guy that's been an APA 2 for a couple of years and wants to be a 3. I'm talking about somebody who has heard of pool, and that's about it, and is now wanting to maybe get on your team, maybe be a 2 on your team, something like that. I'm a very strong believer you have to give them things that they're capable of doing at their level uh, to reinforce them, to give them confidence and all that, to make it fun for them. You're not trying to rush them into mass A shots and all this bullshit. You set them up with fairly simple shots, maybe at, at a certain level, they're ready for this cut. It's not quite the big, you can't quite do the beginner method on this, but it's the same deal I was showing up here. Find that ghost ball. And shoot the cue ball at it. The more they shoot, and the more they make the shot, the more they're going to trust whatever it is they're seeing and, and judging and estimating. The more they're going to trust that stuff, the more confidence they're going to have, the more they're going to not be scared to shoot. Get, you know, eventually they'll get to a shot like this, like cutting the 12. And give a beginner this shot, yeah, they're never going to sweep you again, I bet. Because you're going to miss it. Beginner's going to miss it. They're going to hate you. They're going to hate pool. Everything. But after a certain point, they just, hey, this is just like the other stuff I did. It's just a little bit longer distance both to the object ball and to the pocket. But all the fundamentals are already there. Hitting the cue ball solidly, hitting the cue ball where you want to hit it. Knowing what is the ghost ball, what is the contact point on the twill. Knowing that stuff. I'm sure they may, they may get the shot and they may miss it, but they, I bet they won't miss it by much. And I bet if you get to a certain level, they're going to think, ah, I should have made that shot. Maybe they'll try it again. Maybe then they'll make it. Um, this is what you want. You want them to. You want them to push themselves. You don't want to push them. All you want to do is just kind of, you know, lead them a little bit. Kind of tell them what, you know, what's a good step, and then they set their own pace. If, if it takes them a month to be able to do this reliably, but they're still having fun at it, what do you do? It takes them a month. It, shouldn't, it doesn't mean that you know, you're a bad teacher or they're a bad student or whatever. People just have different paces on things. So 
just want to go to this example today of what I was watching is the guy, the good player, was coaching the beginner player and he was trying to get her to cut and dodge the ball into that pocket from here. And of course he was explaining to her about put a ghost ball right here at the contact point and stuff and shoot the cue ball at that ghost ball. The problem was this particular beginner didn't have a straight enough stroke to do that. She, she swerved to the left pretty badly on her follow throughs. And so she kept missing, missing, missing. I bet she missed, missed the shot 30, 40 times in a row. I can't imagine that was any fun for her to do that. If he had done that, and scratches don't count, it's okay. Sure, this is a long distance. Sure, the cue ball is kind of close to the rail. It's not stuck on the rail, though. But you know how you know how to find the contact point on the object ball you want to hit. Beginner method, ghost ball, but you know how to find it. And you can still see it. It's right here on your shot line. And then so you just shoot the ball and not find, maybe not shoot it that hard. Anyway, that's not what happened. What I would have done with this picture person what is I would have backed up and it said, are you hitting the cue ball where do you want to hit it? She was hitting it nice and solid. I just don't think she was hitting it where she wanted. So she probably thought, well this is a really hard shot. When clearly it's not that hard of a shot if your cue's going in a straight line. Or more or less in a straight line. If your cue's going like this, you don't know, did you aim wrong? Did you get lined up wrong? Did you, you know, judge wrong on, on where to hit the 12? Or is your, is your stroke just messed up? In her case, it was her stroke that was messed up. He needed to back up and, and make sure that that was sound. Everybody's different. And the other thing I would have done, I would have had the same person shooting this shot. Cut to the right versus cut to the left. Let's make them more or less identical. This person had a pretty serious swerve to her left on shots. A lot of times she would miss the 12 on this side. I would have loved to have seen what happens if she tries to cut the 10 into that pocket. It's still swerving to her left. I think she would have hit the 10 full in the face, but I don't know this for a fact. And I think that would have been a good thing to know. Would have been a good thing for her to know as the player. Hey. You're almost always hitting the cue ball to the left of where you think you're going to hit it. And, and one reason why you're doing that is because on your stroke, you're steering to the left. You're even doing it on cuss to the left. You're still steering to the left like that. So maybe I'm talking to, the, to this new player. Let's work on that. Let's work on your stroke mechanics because everything is built off of that. Get them to the point where these two shots are as easy for them as they are for the rest of us. Negating scratch, scratch is another thing that the girl did a lot. Was I'm not going to do it on purpose. Well, she scratched up here a lot on this shot. I think she scratched it in that corner like twice in a row or something, three times in a row maybe. Once you get to, to the point where these shots are more or less hangers for them, in my opinion, that's when you can get into the more advanced stuff, English and things like that. I did a video uh, once about one of the earliest official pool lessons I got. And I was already a decent player at that point. I could do all the things that we talked about here. Um, but the guy was telling me about, stop hitting center ball. Stop hitting center ball, stop hitting vertical axis, stop hitting horizontal axis on the cue ball. Use English on every shot. And his, 
his philosophy, I, I, I don't know if I want to cover this whole thing, was as a more or less new player, I am not likely to hit the cue ball exactly where I want to hit it. I'm likely to miss that point on the cue ball by some amount, depending on my level and all that. His, his thinking was, if I try to hit a vertical axis, like right at noon for follow, odds are decent, but I'm going to hit accidentally hit a little bit of left English or accidentally hit a little bit of right English. And then it becomes, you know, not quite random, but random-ish. The same thing if I went on the, the horizontal axis. I could accidentally put top, I could accidentally put bottom. If I try to hit center ball on the cue ball, I could be somewhere around center, but don't really know where. So the thinking was, if I'm going to aim at top right and miss, and miss that point, that top right point, I'm probably still going to be top right. Just not exactly where I wanted to be. Top right, bottom left. Yep. That was the theory. I liked it. And the, the, the main reason I liked it back then, though, was because it taught me an awful lot about what's the cue ball going to do when I have spin on it. Uh, to this point, our hypothetical beginner, if they're doing it right, they haven't put any spin on anything. Everything's been vertical axis. Probably not even stop shots. Probably just a little bit above center ball for a, a, a rolling cue ball, which is perfectly correct. You want them to try to do that, to be able to hit that vertical axis and just roll the cue ball to where they want, want it to go. But now, maybe at some point, then they're at, at, at the, well, hey, you know, let's vary it up. I remember when I was first starting to play, me and my friend, he had a table in his basement. And if we had this layout right here, we would just freak. Because we didn't know what to do to not scratch. I mean, we were 10 years old, give us a break. But we did not know that, that you could do anything with the cue ball except that and hope you didn't follow it in. And most of the time, we would follow it in. We didn't know stop shots existed. Nobody told us, but you take our beginner, and if they're scared of this shot, they're babying it, trying to make sure they don't follow it in, and, and then you show them, just hit it just a little bit below center ball, and a little bit firmer, and look what happens. And watch their eyes just pop wide open. Because now, now they've learned position play. They've learned the first thing about position play and making the cue ball do what they want it to do. And, and at that point in beginner training for me was always like the most exciting because that's when they, in their mind, they transitioned from, I'm just, you know, I'm just starting out and I'm, I'm a beginner to now all of a sudden they're a pool player. They're still a, you know, start, still starting out as a pool player, but they're like, wow, that's just that's just cool. It's always one of the most fun times for me is right after that. They get really excited. What else is there? What else is there? What else can I learn? What else can you show me? And you know, I, myself, I would I would always be tempted to show them all kinds of fancy shit that I know they would have to learn eventually to be a top player. They have to rein it in. You know, I could show you mass saves and all that, but you're probably not going to remember. You're probably going to get it wrong. You're probably going to screw it up and decide that I'm a dick. I don't know how to teach. So you always have to because let them dictate the pace. But if they say, all right, I did that stop shot. I'm ready for table length draw now. They're really not ready for table length draw. And maybe you let them shoot it once to demonstrate that they're not ready for table length draw. And you say, we'll get to it, we'll get to it, we'll work our way up to it. They're still actually working on the fundamentals a little bit of hitting the, the cue ball correctly and in a straight line. You're still working on that. Even though you think you've got a master, you're still working on it. I'm still working on it. Everybody's still working on it. At a certain point, you learn it 
and you just have to keep doing it to so you don't forget it. Once people that I've been teaching have progressed to the point where they can do a stop shot, that's usually about the point where lessons can vary pretty widely. A lot of it's just going to depend on the game they're playing. But they can go from a stop shot to a tangent line shot. How do you get, how do you make the tangent and get shaped by the 15 in the same pocket? Well, you find the tangent line. Where's the cue ball going to go? Now you know this stop shot action, so you know you're not going to scratch because the cue ball is going to go that way. And teach them that. This is, you know, the position play stuff. And this is not a specific example. It's just teach them about, what, about what's going to happen. Let them learn whatever game they're playing. Because this is the part where they're really starting to have fun. And if they, you know, how a month or two months ago or whatever it was, they could, they could make a ball. And now they can run three or four balls. They can control the cue ball a little bit. You, you, you show them about follow. Drama's tougher. But eventually, when they can draw the ball, shit. I remember me when I could draw the ball. I could, I would shoot this and shoot this and shoot this. And, you know, the best I could do would be a stop shot. I, I mean, it would just be so frustrating. And one time I drew the cue ball back about to where it is now. Like, yep, king of the world right now. And it was cool. Now I just miss cue a lot when I go to do a lot of draw shots. But throw my ghost ball out there. I'm going to stop the video because I keep putting my ghost ball on the table. That's got to be some kind of an omen, right? right? So this is my video about a raw beginner and trying to teach them you know, how to play but not so quickly that they get burnt out and decide that the game is any fun or it's too hard whatever pace yourself and it's always that was always the thing I had to do to myself was pace myself I wanted to jump in and show you know, all the stuff that I can do and and you know, I guess show off a little bit and all that and all I wanted to teach somebody really quickly so all of a sudden they're an awesome player and that makes me look good for being their teacher and all that. Then I rein that in. You always have to rein in the student so they don't get ahead of themselves. If you're teaching somebody how to run a marathon, you don't start them out with a 15K. You start them out with a 5K, maybe. And and they, they work themselves up. It's the same deal with pool. You got to, they've got to get the fundamentals down once they're down and they're having, still having fun with that, add something else, add something else, add something else. A bunch of little goals. I've always believed in almost any endeavor, a bunch of little yet easily attainable goals with a little bit of work are so much better than a goal that's way up here that might never be attained. I think I've used the example before of like, well, like myself. If, if, if when I first started playing pool and my goal was, I'm going to be in the Hall of Fame someday. It would have been, you know, a 50-year goal. And it would have been failure, 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 failure. It would have been 50 years of failures. But if I have little goals, see, by God, I'm going to draw the cue ball someday. And then a month later, you draw the cue ball. Yeah, got that one. Now, what's my next goal? What's my next goal? Get them, get them, get them. Victories, victories, victories. Not a series of failures because you're trying to move forward too quickly and not a goal that's way up here that you may not live long enough to ever meet or may not meet even if you do live a long time. If I had said in my 20s I'm going to be as good as Efren Ray's in his heyday probably never going to meet that goal if I, even if I live to be 200 years old. But I can meet the goal of, of being a little bit better than I am right now I try to do that every day. Every day I try to be a little bit better than I was yesterday. They don't always succeed, but sometimes they do. I could say right now I'm a lot better now than I was this time last year, and I was better this time last year than this time the year before. 
and that kind of progresses back until my heyday in the 90s and then everything went through. But anyway, um, that's my video about teaching pool to a beginner. And I hope it was interesting to some of you guys. Later.